What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm back in the new shop. I'm gonna be working on changing the turbo on this uh, 2018 Duramax here. So it just got a bad bearing I think on it. So we're gonna throw in a brand new uh, GM turbo here. And uh, should be easy to change. You just have to, uh, gonna pull the cab on this. I think some guys say you can change them in the, in the truck, but it's such a pain to do. And also I'm thinking I also wanna change the uh, exhaust manifold gaskets too on this thing because they're leaking pretty bad. So uh, while well, we have the cab off, it'll be really easy to change them and uh, change the turbo and everything on this thing. And then uh, just drop it right back down. I should be able to just, uh, see. just pop this uh, master cylinder off here, all the wiring out, and then uh, just take some of this cover off here and then I can just lift it all up with the whole entire uh, front clip and the grill and everything right in it and should come right off there. I might have to, um, I have the AC, but that's pretty much it, I think. And then there's only a couple of things on the, a few bolts for the cab and a couple of wires, so it's not too bad to do. So um, first off, I'm gonna pull these uh, wheel wells out and then we can start uh, lifting it up and get everything else. So I got the six uh, cab bolts out. Uh, unhook the park brake cable here, which is, these things are kind of a bugger. And then just the shifter cable needs to be unhooked. And then uh, you can lower this thing down and I'll kind of show you what we're gonna need to unhook on the top here. All right, so on this side, we pretty much just gotta unhook this stuff from the firewall here, it just pops off. Uh, this is just like your deaf uh, lines that go down there. And then uh, you're gonna have to unhook on the top uh, like an AC lines and a few other things on top, but most of that stuff can actually stay. And then uh, we'll, yeah, we'll take the intake uh, air, air box out here. Um, I'd hook a few other little lines here, but pretty much just like the the cool lines that go to the to go to the firewall. And then uh, obviously you have to pull the fan shroud off here, and uh, just the upper shroud, the lower shroud. Actually, no, sorry, the upper and lower shroud to come off. And then. Uh, if you just pull this cover off here, you don't really have to pull the grill out, but I, I probably will pull the grill out just to make it easier to get the lines off. And then on this side, this one has an aftermarket compressor, so we'll have to uh, disconnect that. And then it's pretty much, pretty simple. You just pull your uh, fuse block out here and uh, disconnect all these connectors. And uh, for the master cylinder, I'm just gonna disconnect it right off to the, off the booster there. So we don't have to re-bleed the brakes. So you, all you do is take these two 15 mil bolts out there and uh, just pops off and then you kind of have to hang it up or strap it up somewhere when you lift it. Probably just strap it to this line right here for now or somewhere over there. And then on the inside here, there's just a few few wires you need to unhook from the firewall, but, and then also your, you'll obviously do your steering column, uh, or sorry, steering shaft bolts here, power steering, couple power steering lines and then on the front here you're gonna have to undo on this side like your intercooler boost lines and uh, your coolant lines and then the AC lines and also the transmission lines so there's a few things undo for the lines but uh, once you pull kind of this stuff off the front here you can see all of it and then it makes it pretty easy but so we're gonna start pulling this stuff off I'll just put on a time lapse and uh, slowly disconnect all this stuff So I got most of the stuff disconnected here. Got all the wiring disconnected. I just uh, popped off that master cylinder here so it's just loose and uh, all the power steering lines and the fuse block and all that stuff, it actually comes out pretty easy. But the only thing that was kind of tricky was this uh, fan shred here. So actually, apparently I haven't pulled the cab off a 17 to 19 L5P because the 20 and up is like so easy to pull the cab. This one's been kind of a bugger because you don't have the electric park brake seal. This one was all rusted all the heck to get that apart and uh this fan shroud on the new ones are just actually two pieces you just pop them apart and it just comes apart really easy on there and then same with all this stuff it's 
quite a bit different actually and same you know the other ones have like the unibody on the front here so the whole rad sport and everything's hooked together but i'm actually gonna be able to should be able to pull this all as one i have it lifted up here just a little bit so i'm going to uh just keep going a little bit more and make sure i have nothing catching and then i make sure you have this like this is your for your death fluid your line there and uh I think I have most stuff, so the AC pretty much just disconnects right here, and it'll go with the cab, and uh, yeah, I think that's just about everything, but it's a little bit tricky, so it should go back together easy, I just sometimes I find I haven't pulled this apart yet, or pulled one of these, this style of truck apart yet, because apparently I haven't rebuilt one of these, them, like the 7, or the 20 and up are so easy to take apart. Just I've done it so many times, but uh, should be pretty close here. So I'm just gonna try to go up a little bit here and uh, just check around, make sure I'm not catching anything. And I should be able to pop it off pretty quick. So so far everything's clear and pretty good. I'm not really snagging on anything, and uh, it looks like we're we're getting by here without having to pull that fan shroud. So apparently that's the way to do it because I I thought you had to pull this actual cover off, but. I guess he just popped this back and then it has enough room to just barely clear there so should be able to keep going up a little bit more and i'll just keep watching make sure i don't have anything anything catching here all righty so the cat ball lifted up here and uh came off pretty easy so pretty much the only thing i just felt missed was uh it's got two ground cables on uh, the front here where it's kind of hidden by the front bumper but i guess if you have the front bumper off you could definitely see that but uh, besides that it actually came off pretty easy and this this just slid right out of here and uh pretty much ready to pull the turbo now so i'm gonna call that a night or call that it for tonight and uh tomorrow we'll start getting that turbo pulled all right so it's the next day here and uh i just went ahead and pulled this uh heat shield off here first oh, but nice. these ones must be a little bit different than the older ones so it looks like there's just four four bolts right there. Uh, I gotta unhook this uh, couple lines here. And then on this side, it looks like we just got the one line. And then I think there I saw, oh there it is. Yeah, there's two more. And if you, oh, there you go, you can see right at the bottom there, there's two. Or so there's really not too much unhook. I'm gonna take this front, uh, front horn off, or like that plastic intake off there on the front. And uh, I think just one plug in the booster line it should just pop right out of here. So I might actually just take this uh, converter right off just to make my life really easy. Because you really wanted to take this off here. So let's put a little penetrating flute on there and just pop that out of my way. And then it'll be really easy to change that. And uh, a lot less, a lot easier than uh, doing it in the truck, that's for sure. So it took me about five hours to pull the cab, which is probably like the longest it's ever taken me to pull a cab but I actually haven't pulled it on this style so should go together a little quicker than that but just kind of had a few problems that I couldn't figure out but and it was kind of some stuff was kind of rusty on this thing so usually we used to work it on a little bit newer stuff but uh, I'll set up the camera here and we'll see if we can get this sucker pulled out of here pretty quick So I got the turbo out here and uh, it's actually like you can feel how rough this uh, bearing is in here so that's kind of as soon as you rev it up at all it would just pretty much screech so there's actually no chunks or anything missing so that's a good sign and then also I was looking in the cooler pipes and everything and yeah there's not really much for uh, debris in there so but I wouldn't obviously want to run that very long because <laughs> it would probably explode eventually and uh, here's the new one so I pretty much only have to switch over uh, two things. So this little bottom uh, oil tube here, or whatever tube you wanna call it, and then this little uh, sensor, and that's pretty much it. And then you can throw this thing right back in there. I also put all new gaskets on here on all these lines, so we pretty much should be ready to uh, set this thing back in.
Alrighty, so I got the new turbo pretty much fully installed here and uh, some of these bolts down here were quite a bugger to get so I just used a magnet and uh, fished them down there and didn't drop any luckily so but I can't imagine having to do this over the front of the truck it would have been quite a nightmare but uh, it definitely made it way way easier to pull this uh, cat off here I mean it really you just had to loosen it off a little bit and pretty much just popped right out of there so pretty much ready to uh, drop the cat back down now so um just i think i'm gonna actually pull this front bumper off since it's just uh just four bolts or these two bolts these two bolts and then just one bolt on each side and then i'll make it a little bit easier for uh just hooking up these front wires and i don't have to worry about catching uh, anything on the front here so let's go ahead and pop this thing off and then i think we can start setting the cab right back down down here and pretty much all the wiring hooked up and I threw a little coolant in it so actually all the wiring and everything went back together really easy so put the cab back on uh, way quicker than I took it off here so it was probably about two hours to put everything back together so it wasn't too bad and uh, pretty much have all this wiring wrapped up I just need to throw this aftermarket compressor that was in here back on for the airbags and then uh, yeah, I just topped up the power steering fluid and the coolant but I'm gonna have to keep topping up the coolant because these ones are kind of a pain to get all the air out of the system so uh, pretty much ready to fire it up here and then we can relearn the turbocharger actuator and uh, take it for a drive and it should be good to go hopefully. So let's fire it up here and make sure we got some good oil pressure and All right, so we're building lots of oil pressure there. So that should be good. Obviously the power steering fluid squeen a little bit. I did top it up, but it's probably needs to be uh, filled up again. Yeah, it feels like some of it's just kind of full. Like foam in there, yeah. So we got some really big issues here. So uh, the, the turbo and everything's all done, but so I fired it back up and uh, this thing was actually diagnosed by uh, the dealership. I don't know, GM dealership, I'm not sure where exactly he took it, but he's coming back from the States and it started making this noise and he thought it was the turbo and they brought it to the dealership. They looked at it, said turbo. So I was gonna change it for him. And uh, so I just hauled it here, didn't want to drive it, put it right on the hoist. It sounds fine and everything when you uh, just have it idling, but I'll show you here and we'll fire it up. I actually pulled off the, the belt because I thought it was something else that was squealing, but this way, now it's kind of making it the worst, but as soon as you rev it up any, or put any power to it, it's loosened. So I actually ended up pulling the, pulling the, oil some of the oil out of it and there's some metal in the oil so it's <laughs> pretty much i think it's actually the motor that's pooched so one of the bearings is what i'm thinking so i'm pretty sure we're gonna have to put a long block in this thing because which is unfortunate because we just put a new turbo in it so i'm going to try to flush the oil out of the lot uh, oil out of that turbo now a little bit like the oil is actually not bad like if it was just at the very bottom of the panel there's a little bit of filings so uh <laughs> i was thinking we had to put a long block in it so i actually did price one out and i think we're gonna order it up here and we're gonna have to just well now that i have it all back together i have to pull it back apart pull the cab off 
and uh, pull the motor out. So, I mean, it, the, the problem is like, it's got a bit of K on it, but it's still a decent truck. So new long block, I think it was 15 grand Canadian from GM, which is not terrible. And then you get, you get a warranty too. So now it'll have a new turbo. It has, he put a couple new injectors in it too. So inject, injectors should be good. I mean, the body's not perfect, but it's got 230,000 kilometers on it. So, but it's really not worth much as it is. So I guess I wish I would have looked at it a little bit more before I uh, pulled it apart, but the dealership just said the turbo. So I just got a new turbo for it and changed it up. So <laughs> that's unfortunate. Oh, but whatever, I guess it is what it is. I'm probably just gonna wash it up here. Might as well just leave it together until, uh, until the new motor comes in and we can uh, change it there. So yeah, I guess if you need to change your turbo, that's how you change your turbo with uh, pulling the cab, but this one didn't go exactly how I planned. I didn't even, I should have looked into it a little bit more. I didn't even run it. I just backed it off the trailer and lifted the cab off and changed the turbo. So just was going off what the dealership said. So anyways, that sucks. Um, I guess tuning in for the next one will be changing the motor on this thing. Probably putting a long block, a GM long block in it and uh, maybe changing a few other little things just to get her all fixed up and it's just his, it's his farm truck so we we'll back uh, going because I mean you can't buy you could probably get 10 grand for the truck maybe but you also need to go buy another truck which you know they they're not cheap right now so but anyways thanks for watching and uh, tune in for next one I guess we'll be changing the motor on this thing so if this helped you with changing your turbo I, if you can change that turbo in the truck, I could on you, but I I don't think it would be any fun at all. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's possible, but I don't, I would much rather pull the cab, especially since now I have to know how to pull this cab. It's, uh, it would be really, really quick to pull it back off again there. So I didn't actually, I put everything together except for the wheel liners. So, I mean, I just, I guess I'll unhook everything else and pull the, pull the cab back off and pull that motor out, so. But anyways, that's going to be a wrap for this video. And uh, thanks for watching and tune in for the next one. Peace.